thank you to Tim for having me speak for a third year in a row. So let's go through a journey on that app that I started to build. And I started like anybody else with an idea. And um, wait, did that go past it? There was an idea. There was a domain. As you can see the date, I bought this a little bit ago, had to think about that idea for a while, and then I finally started to build it. So Fruitful is an app where you can connect with others at conferences because it's something that I have been doing for a while at the moment. And you kind of make a little Pokemon card, and then you tag the person with the conference that you meet them at. So then when you meet them at the next conference, you're like, oh yeah, we met at, what was it called? The Swift something? And so then you can remember where you met them and then also write notes about the person because something I've noticed at conferences is that you tend to say the same thing over and over to different people. So you start to forget who you talk to because you do have a lot of the same conversations. And if you didn't know until that point, I was kind of an imposter. I had to write this with server-side Swift uh, using Vapor on the back end because up until that point, I had still never made my own back end with Vapor. So finally, I did it. That is the link you can go to download the app. And with that, I wanted the card to look something like this. You know, it has your photo on it, your uh, name, job description, title. But then when I actually ended up shipping it, and to this day, if you go to download it, it will look something like this. There is no photo, as you can tell, and then add social media. But there's no photo because I had to start looking at how do you actually add a photo into an application. And there's only a few steps. You upload your photo, save the photo somewhere, and then you download the photo. It's not terribly difficult, and if you go and look at my talk from last year, you can see the turmoil that I went through to try to get to that point of how do I actually accomplish this. But let's do some recap on how it works. First, you actually have to learn Vapor. Then you have to learn Postgres. You're almost there, and you start learning Heroku to deploy everything together. And then, I didn't know that that was the logo for Amazon CloudFront. And so, like anybody, you start to look at all different tutorials on how do I accomplish the thing that I am trying to do. But there's not many tutorials. So this was how I felt after that. Even one of the books by Tim did not give me the instruction that I was hoping for. <laughs> so after that, you turn, as everyone does, to Reddit. And you get helpful answers on Reddit sometimes. This person gave you all the links that you can definitely see to, that I can't see in front of me, to the uh, server-side Swift website for this conference, the uh, Vapor Codes website, and multiple GitHub repositories. But I agree with the original poster who said, I did not put this big enough. Uh, I've, looked at the, I've looked at these, but there's too much for me to digest personally. And I agree. If you tell someone, oh, you can learn Vapor, go to the GitHub. Have you read that in a while? Has anybody? Can you raise your hand? <laughs> I see two other than Tim. So what, what can we do about this? So last year, I challenged everybody to make something new about server-side Swift. So make a new blog, a YouTube video, go about making a course, or really just build in public, share your experience, and you can even make it open source. Because we, right now, if you didn't know, we are at the server-side Swift conference. Everybody in this room are probably the most, like, the people who want server-side Swift to succeed the most. So with that, after my talk last year, I told people, hey, you should go make a couple things. Two people did. Seb went out and updated the AWS Amazon uh, docs to add a pre-signed URL so I could figure out how to properly upload a photo. It was great documentation. And then uh, Nathan Rolick went, or Rolnick went through and updated his website, the Swift Dev Toolkit, which went through how to store a file with Vapor. But who else went and made content? So I started searching the depths of the internet with these search terms, server-side Swift, Swift Hummingbird, Swift WebAssembly or Wasm, Swift Embedded, and a Swift AWS Lambda. 
I visited the 10th page of Google, so you did not have to. That is what it looks like, because I'm sure none of you have seen it. And so with that disclaimer, though, I specifically filtered the results to only look at the past year of anything. So from the time the conference happened last year up until now. When searching server-side Swift, we get a bunch of blogs that regularly post, and these are all amazing, and I highly recommend anybody visits them. We have the Swift Dev by Tibor, wherever he may be, uh, the Swift Toolkit by Nathan Relnick, the actual Swift language blog, the server-side Swift website, and then Swift on server that both Tibor and uh, Yannis as well uh, write. We also get a couple other results, if you've ever been to Google, that start to look like this. And I definitely cannot read these from here. But they're not the best, but they are important discussions that we're having. So you can also go to, when I was searching through this, Hummingbird WebAssembly embedded AWS Lambda, you have to put the word Swift in front of all of this to properly find the correct thing. What I found with all of these were just Not much. With these search terms, you get a couple articles talking about what is it, not so much about how does it work, how do I get into it. You get some links to the documentation itself, so you get all the GitHubs, you get everyone sharing the GitHub, so all the social media posts about this. But that is about the farthest you get with this. Is this enough? Is this enough for server-side Swift to survive or to thrive? It kind of feels like this. We're alive, but we're dead. But I want to take a minute, though, for everybody. Raise your hand. Have you written, posted about server-side Swift, contributed, done anything around it? Someone, ra Everyone raise your hand. I see a couple hands. Everybody clap for them, because they have made the community that we have now. And as Tim said, it is getting better, so thank you to all of those people. We are making progress with server-side Swift. The question remains, though. There are all of these amazing blogs around server-side Swift. If you recognize any of these logos, they are absolutely amazing, and we want this as a um, we want this as a community to succeed. These are the people who are doing that right now. What do you think you're going to do? It's your turn. You could just post about the conference. If you haven't yet, everybody who's here, I'm sure, has some form of social media. If you don't, just drop in the server-side Swift Slack. Post, or you're here at the conference right now. That is sharing the word about social media. When I was Googling everything, one of the top results on the second page of Google was Tibor's post about being at the Embedded Workshop by Frank. And that was on the sec second page of Google. You can post about just being here, that you're learning something new, even if you post the most obvious thing, the snippet of, oh, Swift containers, I forgot that was announced. That's OK. Just post about it and expand the community. Let people know about it. And so I want to try to do this publicly again, whether or not that's insane or not. I do that. So with that, I want to announce a new website that I'm trying to start where I will also start writing Swift blogs because I also don't. I just post on the internet about social media all the time. That is called learnswift.space. That will be the URL to just right now a website with a newsletter. And then later on, I'll be adding an actual blogging platform once I decide which one to use. And that will be the website that I'm going to post more Swift con content on. And then later, also, I'm thinking having others participate as well and post their knowledge. Because of course, as everybody in this room should know, I do not know everything. And I don't know how to do everything. So with that, that is the new website that I hope to start as well. So thank you.